volunteers in Hangzhou use the internet to care for their care recipients during this critical period. A Clean Up the Streets run was held in Sabah, Malaysia to raise public environmental awareness. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Simon Gan. Thank you for joining us. With the number of patients infected by the coronavirus rapidly increasing, the cities of Hangzhou and Yiwu in Zhejiang Province, China, are forced to be sealed off. However, Tzuchi volunteers in Hangzhou continue using the internet to care for their care recipients. A Tzuchi volunteer couple provides hot soup, hot tea and homemade bread to the village head and the villagers who stand guard at the intersection. Half the city is sealed off. If you were there with a limited supply of food, what would you do? This city volunteer couple, Wang Jianyou and Gong Chiu Xian, have opened their hearts to set meals. Now we're boiling ginger tea and we'll give it to the staff at the intersection, those who are upholding their jobs. We want them to have hot ginger tea in the morning. The village executive and some villagers have to take shift every 12 hours to guard the street. So the couple gave them instant noodles and energy drinks on the first day, but decided to give them homemade meals. We're bringing this for those guarding the street. The couple boils hot ginger tea in the morning and herbal soup in the evening. They also make assorted grain bread for the guards. They protect all of us very well. Those guarding the street happen to be near the entrance to my alley. We are at home, so is there anything meaningful that we can do? We can make bread, boil soup and ginger tea for them so they can stay warm. The city of Hangzhou is also sealed off. Every family is allowed to have only one person going out every two days, so local city volunteers use the internet to visit their care recipients. Our mobility is restricted, but our love has no limit. We call our care recipients in Hangzhou one by one to see how they're doing, if they need more money for their daily life, if they need more money, we use the internet to log onto the bank and transfer the money to them immediately. We also remind them during this critical time, they should keep themselves safe and watch over their hygiene. During this critical time while their mobility is restricted, Tzuchi volunteers use wisdom and compassion as they want to pass on their love to other people. In Singapore, there has been a total of 50 confirmed cases of coronavirus. To prevent the spread of fake news and rumours, the Singaporean government has set up a website and sent information through communication software. Meanwhile, Tzuchi volunteers in Singapore also helped promote health knowledge as they visited their care recipients. With the wide range of internet information, how do we know which is true? I mostly look at Facebook and the messages my friends sent through WhatsApp. How to distinguish them, I do not know. I look at how many people send the same messages. I have uh, got myself registered with Ministry of uh, Government Singapore, uh, the MOV.SG, and I get it through WhatsApp daily. The one which comes from trusted sources is what I rely on. Is the call? When the government issued the Doors Kong Yellow Alert, Singapore city volunteers traveled to the homes of care recipients to promote health education and care for them. We hope that as our volunteers share the correct information with them, we can help calm the care recipients' anxious minds. They can learn to protect themselves. There is no need to overact or panic. And for the whole duration, we are orange. On February 7, the government raised the doors con alert level from yellow to orange. Tsuji has also responded to this. Now, and doors con orange is more for the healthcare sector, like community, to be more aware. Um, so we have uh, stepped up on certain measures in the uh, healthcare setting to 
limit the spread. If you, if, you, if you suspect you have come in contact with some uh, cases or you have been out of country to China or something and you have a bit of fever and sore throat, uh, maybe you should see earlier. As people maintain personal hygiene and take preventative measures, they can still carry on with their daily living. With the shortage of surgical masks, volunteers began making cloth masks in hopes that the surgical masks will be sufficient for the frontline medical staff. After several trial and errors, they have found the best type and are making them for the recycling volunteers and care recipients. Volunteers cut the cloth, fold it and iron it. This is a model for the cloth mask. The volunteer then cut a 10 cm long wire and insert it into the mask. Every detail must not be overlooked. The wire can keep the mask in place, so when you talk, the air outside the mask won't come in. Yesterday, I thought that inserting the wire would be difficult, but when I look at it today, I feel the sewing of both sides near the ears is slightly difficult. Volunteers sew two layers of cloth together. Many volunteers work together to create these loving cloth masks. We make these cloth masks for our recycling volunteers and also our care recipients. If they are healthy, they can wear the cloth mask when they are at home or going out. Then they will not use many medical masks. Masters from the Jeans at Board use a video conference to talk to the volunteers about the details in making cloth masks. Staff from the Dye Technology also offer their suggestions with waterproof cloth. If we want the function of the mask to be better, then the Dye Technology can provide these three types of cloth. Volunteers in Thailand are also in the video conference. Volunteers are mobilized to produce cloth masks so they can leave the resources to the frontline medical staff during this critical period. Washing your hands frequently is the focus of current coronavirus epidemic prevention. However, it may not be conventional to wash your hands when you go outside. For this reason, hand sanitizing liquid is the best option for many. Follow our report as we learn the correct way of using the hand sanitizing liquid. Using your hands to eat something and then typing on the keyboard or rubbing your eyes or touching your nose and mouth after eating is a habit of many people. However, in response to this outbreak of coronavirus, cleaning one's hands is quite an important thing. And hand sanitizing plays a key role, but does this really get rid of the virus? If I'm in a hospital or a public space and I see the hand sanitizer dispenser, I will use it. I use my hands to press it down for about five seconds and then walk away. Hand sanitizers allow one to rub their hands quickly, killing off a lot of bacteria. But in fact, it takes 2 cc and one needs to scrub for more than 15 seconds and it takes 7 steps to be effective. We have a formula, inside, outside, cross, clasp, thumb, and inside, and done. Inside is for the palm and then there's the outside of the hand and then intersect your fingers and then clasp them together then wash your thumb and then fingertips. If you use more hand sanitizer liquid, we may wash around the wrist. This nurse suggests that hand sanitizing liquid cannot replace real washing with water, especially when hands are dirty. You must wash your hands with water and when you wash, you must remove jewelry such as rings and watches to avoid hidden germs to prevent spread of epidemic. Clean Up the Street Run was held in Sabah, Malaysia, with over 1,500 people of all ages participating. Such volunteers were invited to promote recycling during the event, hoping to raise the awareness of recycling among the locals. With a plastic bag in everyone's hands, the participants are ready to collect the rubbish throughout the run. <laughs> this run was organized by the Zero Waste Sabah group, together with some local NGOs. There are 1,500 participants, which consists of government officials, teachers and students. The aim of today's activity is to collect rubbish, to clean up the area assigned by the organizers. I jog every week, 
but this time it's different because it's collecting rubbish while running. The event route begins from the park and ends at the beach. The participants collect every rubbish they see along the way. I saw a lot of abandoned rubbish along the way, and we need to collect all these rubbish. I think this is a very good activity, as it provides opportunity for the whole family to participate and educate the future generations at the same time. We can also protect the environment while exercising. It's a win-win. Besides collecting rubbish, such volunteers are also present to educate the public about recycling. I'll ask them about what they bring back because they're mostly rubbish. I asked them where they pick it up, and they replied it's either from the rubbish bin or they dug it from the dirt, but it is still mostly rubbish. From this activity, I think that people are still not clear about how to do recycling. I feel that today's activity is very meaningful as they will learn how to carry out recycling the correct way through this activity. I have the responsibility to sort out, sort out all of the rubbish uh, and also the recyclable ones so that we can know, we can identify which one is recyclable and non-recyclable and it's easier for the authorities to divide them. So we're tipping, we are here to educate the public to reduce the usage of plastic bags, bring our own recycling bags while shopping. That's our aim. Recycling has become an important part of saving the planet right now. Activities like this can raise the public's environmental awareness. Before the event was held, volunteers from the NGO visited the Kapit Recycling Station to learn more about sorting recyclable items. Teacher volunteers there were also very happy to share their recycling experiences and encourage everyone to practice recycling. Let's take a look. Before the Clean Up the Streets run was organized, 26 volunteers from Zero Waste Sabah visited the Recycling Education Center in Kapit to understand more about recycling. Everyone of them will carry a bag. We all to tell them what to do. They concluded that they learned a lot. They understand the importance of not using plastic bags. Without the usage of plastic bags, there will not be the need of producing it, thus reducing rubbish. The recycling volunteers are happy to share their experiences, and the Q&A session between the two parties were very positive. What is actually recyclable, what is not recyclable, we, we know that throughout our own, you know, our own experience, you know, we are always shocked that ah, this is not recyclable, ah, this is recyclable, so we just come here just to learn, nah, yeah, just to get a clearer idea you know, so that we can, when, during the day of the event, then we are more, is it, where we can be more organized, we know what to do. To better understand how to do recycling, one needs to do it to have a better impression. To practice recycling, one needs to take actions. Only through practice will one better understand the importance of environmental protection. In Taiwan, a polio survivor, Yang Meiqing, feels weakness in her body. Fortunately, her husband has quit his job to care for her wholeheartedly. However, the couple now face financial difficulties, especially because Yang needs to rely on positive airway pressure. So she volunteers provide subsidies and visit them regularly. Yang is very grateful for the volunteers' love and care. In the past, I was living without a soul. Now I'm truly alive. I live for people I love. I live for people around me. Because of her, I have a complete world. It's aromatic. I hold a spatula with my mouth to cook. 
I hold a knife with my mouth. I press the food ingredients with my hands. Yes, that is how I do it. Let me show you one thing. I hold my hand by biting it. I cannot lift my hand. I need to hold it in my mouth for it to be lifted. Does your back hurt? This is her spine. Yes, spine has come to the side. Originally, the stomach should be here. Her stomach is here. Her heart has come to this place. Her lung has been pressed down. It collapsed. She only has 10% lung function. She is very polite. If we give her something, she will say, please don't bring me anything. If you do, I'll feel embarrassed. She's not greedy and she leads a frugal life. She called me in September because I could not afford the positive airway pressure. In the past, we could get subsidies when using positive airway pressure. However, starting from October 2019, the subsidies have been cancelled. There was a person who could not afford to rent one and therefore passed away. I hope a lot of people hear this. You need to call out for help. Don't just wait to die. People will come help you. Unfortunately, Sister Mei Yu has helped us. Tsuji has helped us. I do not have to wait and die because I cannot afford to rent positive airway pressure or oxygen producer. I often tell my husband that being a Life is something to cherish. Her husband is not ordinary. This is not something ordinary people could do. Look, he has accompanied her for 10 years throughout his world. His world centers around her. It is like this. In the past, when I had to use sanitary pad, he changed it for me. Anything that you can think of, he does all of it. I only hope for his good health. If he's healthy, I'll be happy. Or else I worry about him and would not be happy. If she is doing well, I am fine. It is that simple. In the past, when researchers wanted to study the brain, they had to rely upon foreign brain banks which supplied samples taken from foreigners. As the genes of Western people are different from Chinese people, there was a gap in research. In September 2019, the Ministry of Health and Welfare revised the brain donation process and also held a brain bank preparatory meeting so that domestic brain donors can finally carry out their last loving wish. The kind grandfather is accompanying his grandson growing up. Mr. Luo Jingxing suffers from ALS and cherishes his time with his children and grandchildren. When he died, he wanted his illness to be used as medical research. Since he's gone, he wants to save people by donating his organs and brain, which is also very meaningful. Organ donation has helped many patients, and Mr. Luo's brain has also become extremely valuable research data. Mr. Luo is the first person in Taiwan to legally donate his brain. Saving his brain also means that we have preserved his love and compassion. I think that this is most in line with my father's spirit, donating the brain and spinal cord to physicians to do research. Talking about his father's last wishes, his son revels in his glory and his great love. And this is the family's heirloom. When my father died after his death, the brain donation surgery was done with full dignity and respect. All operations were performed in accordance with the general world practices, and after anesthesia, his organs were removed. The patient who made the brain donation has passed away. The doctor is respectful. He still performs anesthesia, and then removes the brain because he does not want the patient to feel pain again.
Dear father, you are loved by others, and they feel your love. You have lived a very admirable life. We went to the funerary hall to visit Mr. Luo's remains and thank him. His work on Earth was completed, and his body and his brain are now our work. So we will do his research well. To do human brain research, it was previously impossible to obtain such tissue in Taiwan. It was previously necessary to buy such brain tissue from abroad. We will put the brain tissue in this box, and it will be stored in this refrigerator at minus 80 degrees Celsius to preserve the protein DNA and RNA well. Obtaining brain samples has been quite difficult in Taiwan in the past. More than 10 years ago, the Zhiji Medical Center in Hualien utilized silent mentors to become a pioneer in brain bank research. At that time, we had 13 silent mentors and their family members willing to donate brains, so we quickly entered the operating room to took out the brain tissue. One part of the study involved DNA and RNA, and pathological sections were taken and divided amongst two research divisions. At that time, it was rare to have a brain tissue bank in Taiwan. Superintendent Lin was very far-sighted. He knew that brains should be preserved for research. We hope that not only Hualien City Medical Center and other hospitals around the country could utilize our precious brain bank resources. The brain bank operates utilizing corpses from real life. Generally, this practice can be divided into three methods, donating the body, organs, and brain. People can donate organs to save people, and they can also donate brains. However, surgery to remove the remains of too many organs is not suitable for becoming a silent mentor. If an elderly person dies, they may not be suitable for organ donation due to aging organs, but they can choose one of two ways, donating brain and general donation. Although the three kinds of donations each have different conditions and restrictions, if they do not meet particular requirements, they can still be transferred to do other donations. When there are some donors, for example, who may have some wounds related to just going through surgery, though they may have a general willingness to donate, they may not be suitable as a general donation. We can transfer them to do brain donation and fulfill their last wish. Brain disease may be genetic or due to some are environmental factors. Some people say that Alzheimer's disease is caused by industrial air pollution, as heavy metal ions accumulate and cause lesions in the brain. In today's society where food, clothing, transportation can be affected by pollution, there may be more cerebral abnormalities as more research into this area can lead to better treatment and prevention. Zhiji volunteers in Canada and the Mississauga Zhiji Humanitarian School help prayer sessions, hoping that the recent coronavirus epidemic will end soon. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.